We don't always know what to do with anger. Should we hide it, show it to everyone, or find a more constructive way to channel it? Welcome to Pastor's Point, I'm Jamie Schmitz. Today's program addresses this question as Pastor John Tebow from Garden Park Christian Church in Monclova, Ohio, shares his message entitled, Be Angry and Do Not Sin. Anger. When did you last experience it? How did the way that you responded to your anger work for you? Anger is the most misunderstood of all of our emotions. The, the management, the mismanagement of anger causes all kinds of problems, even among the most sincere and devoted Christians. Psychiatrist Paul Meyer, Christian psychiatrist, states that mismanaged emotions has been the cause of around 95% of the depression that he sees in his clients. Matt, one vivid memory that I have of mismanaging anger goes all the way back in my life to the spring of 1976. I was a, a new Christian, a senior in high school, and I was a part of, of a, a 880 relay team that uh, you know, was really good. I mean, we were blessed to, to have some fast guys on that team. And um, every time we ran within our league competition, uh, we won. In fact, we had set the school record and going into the league meet that year, we, we knew that we were going to win. We had the best team uh, in our league. It was just a matter of, you know, how much we would win by. And so we went into that race and uh, took off. We were ahead right from the get-go. Um, I ran the first leg as I stood on the, near the finish line waiting for our last man to cross. I noticed the uh, official on the backstretch had raised the flag. And then I found out the flag was because our third and fourth man had stepped one half a step out of the exchange zone. And even though we had finished about 15 yards ahead of the second place finisher, we had been disqualified and didn't even place in that event. I was so angry. I was so angry. Something came out of my mouth that should not have come out of my mouth. And immediately after it came out, I looked and there looking back at me was one of the other uh, members of that, cross, of that t relay team whose father was a pastor. <laughs> and uh, God used him to confront me about how I was mismanaging my anger. I felt shame. I walked away. I walked away. How could I say such things? We have all mismanaged anger. I want to call your attention to the, the Word of God, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 32. What, what is anger? How do you understand uh, what anger is? Anger is an emotional signal that, that tells you that something needs to be changed. Anger's not, it is not inherently good or bad. And like all of our emotions, anger is spiritually neutral. The quality or value of anger really depends upon how I work it out. In fact, God is a God of wrath. God experiences anger. God is capable of becoming angry. The scriptures record that God has been angry at times in the past that God is currently angry about some things going on in our present and that God, uh, in the end, will pour out His wrath uh, upon this fallen, rebellious world. So God, uh, God is made us in His likeness, in His image. And I like to tell people, you know, as persons created in the image of God, we need to learn to act our image. We need to learn to act in all ways uh, in the way in which God would have us to act as his children. And one of the most important ways is understanding through God's word how to be angry and not to sin. And so let's begin reading in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17 through 32, paying a special attention 
to verses 26 and 27. The Apostle Paul writes, Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their hearts. They've become callous and have given themselves up to sensitivity, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not what you learned in Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to the former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created in the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Now verse 26 and 27, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief steal no longer, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for the building up as it fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away along with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Throughout the Bible, anger is seen as an emotion that can be a necessary and good thing when it is expressed at the right time, in the right way, for the right reason. Listen, Jesus, Jesus Christ, God incarnate, our Lord and Savior, became angry and sinned not. After 34 years in ministry, I'm convinced that, that just as much, if not more, sinning happens when people feel good about themselves as when they are feeling bad or angry. So anger, anger think of it as anger is like water. In its, in its pure form, it's healthy and it's necessary for life. But when, you, when it becomes polluted by self-serving or slanted perceptions or ungodly motives, anger can be nasty, anger can be very, very destructive. And so think about the last time you experienced anger. What triggered it? What set you off? And then how did you handle it? Scriptures straightforwardly tell us in Ephesians chapter 4, Verse 26, be angry. It's okay. Acknowledge it. Accept it. It's normal. Uh, it's, it's even spiritual, very spiritual at time for me to experience that negative emotion of anger. I have God's permission. You have God's permission. Even his endorsement and blessing to be angry now and then. But, big but, and here's the catch, do not sin. And we're to interpret that anger demands uh, anger. It, it demands energy to act and to act in a way that's pleasing to God. So how do we do that? How do we experience this strong negative emotion, anger and not sin? Three simple uh, words that I want you to remember that will help you to do this. Name it, claim it and aim it. Name it, claim it, and aim it. Name it. Number one, just be true. Be honest about the emotion you're feeling. Maybe like, like myself, you grew up in a home and you weren't encouraged to, to uh, audibly acknowledge the emotion of anger. And uh, maybe it was more acceptable in your household to say things like, well, I'm, I'm confused or, or I'm kind of I'm depressed. And unfortunately, even as a Christian, I wasn't encouraged early on in my discipleship to understand that anger is a neutral uh, in, uh, spiritually. Certainly it's a negative emotion, but spiritually uh, it all depends upon how I work it out. And so to begin with, it's important to acknowledge that anger is a neutral negative emotion and that there are certain experiences in which a Christian, a mature godly Christian ought to experience and does experience anger when we experience fear, Abuse, betrayal, rejection, disappointment, uh, being taken advantage of, being lied to 
or deceived by someone we trust, uh, being uh, embarrassed in a public situation. Uh, and, and so anger is a normal, natural emotion. Whether my anger becomes good or bad depends upon how I work it out. And so number one, name it. Number two, claim it. Claim it. James, a little book of James, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3 says, What causes quarrels and fights among you? Is it not this that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet, you cannot obtain, so you fight, you quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to to spend it on your own passions. James says that too often we get ticked off because we haven't gotten our way. What we want, what we think we deserve. Listen, uh, unchecked anger almost always will result in, in us saying and doing something we will regret. Remember, remember that even, even just anger, even anger that, that has a, a righteous reason for having that strong negative emotions must be responded to in a God-honoring, loving uh, way. And so I need to claim my anger. It's my anger. I'm feeling the way I am feeling for a reason. And I need to claim that anger and explore what it is that has <clears throat> elicited that strong emotion within my being. How do we do that? Um, number one, I think like we need to understand and appreciate God's design for it. That anger, anger gives me energy that I didn't even know I had. All of a sudden, my energy levels go up. Because it's my anger. It's operating within me. Um, anger disrupts uh, my, my normal routine. It stops me from doing what I've been doing or my normal routine. And it demands my attention. It heightens my awareness. Suddenly I'm, I'm more acutely aware of, of who and what is going on around me and, and what has happened in that moment. And it invites me. This is the big one. It invites me to turn to God to turn my attention to God and to ask God for wisdom. For, Lord, how do I manage? What are you calling my attention to by this strong negative emotion that I'm experiencing right now? Our sinful tendency when we become angry is often to blame others instead of going to God and asking for discernment. Instead of identifying what is the particular reason or issue that's resulting in my feeling this way. So we need to name it. We need to claim it. And in claiming it, we need to go to God for understanding, for wisdom, for direction on how we need to aim it. And that's our third point. Name it, claim it, and aim it. If it's possible, if it's at all possible, when you experience anger, walk away from the situation, get, walk away from the person, try to get alone with God, and then pray. Talk to God. Acknowledge before the Lord what you're feeling. Pour out your heart to God and ask God to help you to specifically identify why, where that strong negative emotion's coming from. Ask God, say, Lord, Please put your finger, put your, help me to see precisely what it is that's upsetting me. Let me take you back to the track. So after uh, making eye contact with the pastor, after expressing my anger as a 17-year-old in an inappropriate way, I walked away. I walked away into the infield and immediately God convicted me, you know, I shouldn't have said those things. And, and then I started thinking about and asking God to help me to process, you know, what just happened. And, you know, I realized that it was so wrong for me to blame my teammates for being disqualified. I mean, these were the guys that I had run with all season long, guys that because of their discipline and, and teamwork, we had broken the school record and we had won several, several races. And then I realized that, look, they didn't intend to step out of the exchange zone by a half a step. It was an accident. 
And then most importantly, God reminded me why I was running. He reminded me that, that the reason I was running was for Him and for His glory, not for mine, not for uh, even our school team. It was for God. It was God who, who gave me the ability and the desire and the joy of running that race in order to glorify Him, uh, not myself or my school. And so I prayed and I, I asked God to forgive me and to just restore in me that reason for running. <sighs> wow. Can you think of some times in your past when you were angry, when you became anger and you processed, worked through that anger in a good and God honoring way? I hope you have something to build on. Whether or not you do, I want to encourage you from this day forward to begin practicing this simple formula of how to be angry and not to sin. To name it, call it what it is, accept the fact that you've been created in God's image and likeness and you are actually acting your image when you become angry about certain situations or things that happen in your life. Let me give you some good God-honoring reasons for being angry uh, right here and now. How about false teachers in, in the church? You think God gets upset about that? I think He does. I know He does. Uh, the unjust treatment of people, human trafficking, for example, abortion. God is angry about those things. We too ought, uh, ought to share in that kind of anger. Uh, when we observe innocent people being taken advantage of, uh, when we uh, experience political leaders who say one thing and do another. And so we need to go to God when we experience anger about these things and other things and then ask Him after we uh, identify it, we name it, we claim it, it's our anger. God, what would you have me to do in response to have having this strong emotion about this situation or these people or these things. One thing you might also, in fact, I encourage you strongly to do, if there is time, is in the midst of your anger, is firstly, of course, go to the Lord. But then if you have time, and sometimes you need to make the time and take the time is to go to another person, to go to a brother, a sister, a pastor, a counselor, someone who can help you, who can listen to you, who can help you to sort through and to better understand as you claim that anger for yourself, you know, what is really bothering you? What is it about the situation that is so upsetting to you? And the more the more closely you can identify that, then you can work out strategies to respond uh, to that. And so take time, take time to just work through the anger, if at all possible, and then to plan to aim your anger in a positive, positive and constructive uh, way. Let me tell you the rest of my story. So, um, and this, this experience for me set the course of, of my life. It was, it was the beginning of me discovering that anger can really be a positive uh, experience. This negative emotion can result in positive things. So after being disqualified in the, the, the 880 relay, a few events later, uh, I ran in the, in the open 440 back then is what it is, was uh, now it's the 400, but um, I was the lowest, the slowest qualifier in the fastest heat. There were eight runners uh, in the final heat. And if you know anything about track, that put me in the outside lane. And so I am staggered way out ahead of everybody. And I remember standing on that track and just affirming before God, Lord, I know why I'm on this track. I know why I'm running. And whatever happens, I want to run uh, to glorify you. And uh, the gun went off, and I took off around the curve and down the back stretch. And, uh, of course, when you're staggered that far out, you are in first place. 
Um, and as I ran down the back stretch as fast as I could, I, I looked up and into the west, and it just so happened at that time in the evening, the sun was setting and there were clouds, and it was this beautiful scene, this beautiful scene. And it was like God was displaying in nature what he had communicated to me personally on the infield of that track is, John, you are my son and my servant, and you are to live your life to glorify me in any and every situation. And, uh, man, we had a conversation <laughs> as I was running my heart out. And uh, we, I came into the uh, back stretch and came around that back curve knowing in my mind uh, the truth is about to be told because when you come off the back stretch into the final straightaway, you can look across and see exactly where you're at in the race. And so that's what I did. And I looked across the track and there was nobody there. There was nobody there. I was in first place. And I was surprised. I, and I, I remember thinking, just you know, run as fast as you can, which is what you do when you run around the track one time. And to, to my surprise and everyone else's, I won that event. And um, it wasn't so much about winning that event that mattered the most to me. What really became so meaningful that day was as my teammates congratulated me and as we talked about uh, the, the whole meet, I was able to talk to them about why I ran, which was to give glory to Jesus Christ and to honor Him. God wants each of us to run this race, this, this race that, that, that the scriptures uh, makes the analogy is life. Our life is a race. It's not a sprint. It's a, it's a long distance race. And God wants us to run to win. And one of the ways in order to win, one of the things we, every one of us, every Christian must learn to do in order to win is, is we must learn. We must learn how to be angry and not to sin. It is, it is possible. Um, it is necessary. I confess to you as, as a brother, as a Christian, as a pastor, um, in my anger, I still occasionally sin. And when I do, I turn to God in repentance. And sometimes um, I go to my spouse, my wife, and talk through my anger. And sometimes I go to the elders of my church in order to talk through uh, things that are angering me. And because of that, I believe God has kept me and will continue to keep me in a lane in this race of life that enables me to cross the finish line, uh, honoring Him, glorifying Him. Whatever place I finish through Jesus, I know it's first place. Amen. By His grace, we finish this race, number one. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this amazing race we call life. It is a great race. It is the race in which we run, knowing your grace, knowing our forgiveness, knowing that we are being recreated in Christ to become more and more like you. And God, we want to be like you. And we know that Acting our image, acting like you involves experiencing anger at times because of certain situations that are so displeasing and dishonoring to you and hurtful to others. And God, you allow us to experience strong emotion, to awaken us and to bring our attention to something in order to act, to act in a way that is loving and constructive. And Father, that is who we want to be, and that is how we want to act. And so we pray, we pray that through your Spirit's enabling, through the instruction of your word, the encouragement of your, of your saints, that we truly will be a people who are able to be anger and to not sin. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for watching Pastor's Point today. If you'd like to learn more about the church featured on today's show, feel welcome to connect with them at the following contact information.
If this show has been a blessing to you, visit our feedback section on our website at wlmb.com slash pastors point. You will also be able to request a DVD of today's show and find a schedule of pastors for this season's episodes. We are so grateful for your prayers and financial support that make Pastors Point possible. Be sure to tune in next time when another local pastor shares a message from the Word of God right here on Pastors Point.